this session on explorative search and querying. The first paper is What Makes a Query Semantically Hard by Guglielmo Fagioli and uh, Stefano Marchesina, who is, who is still owing me a script, but people <laughs> don't care about that. I said that I'm good. <laughs> you say, you say. Maybe Vladimir must go there. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, so uh, I'm going to, to give you our opinion, mine and Stefano, on uh, uh, what makes a query semantically hard. So as you can see, there is a question mark. So we are uh, uh, certainly hoping for you to, to give you also your, uh, your own opinion. And uh, first of all, uh, not. Okay. First of all, allow me to introduce you to what we meant uh, with uh, semantic, uh, semantically hard queries. Uh, well, it is a concept uh, tightly related with uh, the concept of a semantic gap, which uh, describes uh, somehow the, the difference in uh, how uh, humans encode and uh, imagine information and the way the computer or in general the machine he is able to, to encode it. Um, more in details, uh, when we come to search engines uh, and uh, in general uh, information retrieval, what we mean uh, is uh, the mismatch uh, between uh, uh, the, um, the, the way the user uh, expresses his uh, inform or uh, her information need through the, the query and uh, how the, the system is able to, to answer through, to such queries through uh, the, the regional model itself. So um, the, the, the semantic gap is uh, caused by many different sources. Uh, for example, uh, rhetorical figures uh, or um, idioms or, or stuff like that. But uh, uh, probably the two most uh, relevant uh, elements uh, that are responsible for the, the presence of a semantic gap are the synonymy and the, the policy. Uh, to go a bit uh, more in details of uh, what we mean when what we mean when we talk uh, about uh, synonymity, uh, it is the clearly the difference uh, uh, between uh, the meaning. Uh, sorry, uh, it it, uh, it corresponds to what happens when uh, uh, multiple uh, multiple words have uh, in fact the same uh, same meaning. So. Um, when uh, there is a, a set of, uh, of words which has the, the very same, uh, represent the very same concept. So to give you um, uh, an example, here we have a, a very specific uh, queen, how big the sun is, uh, which uh, as uh, uh, according to our own opinion, we are the users and we are thinking uh, uh, about a specific information we want to know the dimension of uh, our own uh, our own star. So uh, the the response is um, the both responses are uh, okay, but uh, the problem is that uh, while the first contains uh, the word sun, which is um, uh, easy for a lexical model to therefore to retrieve this specific document, the second uh, let's say document the second sentence contains the word the soul, which is the uh, Latin uh, representation of uh, the, the concept of sun and, um, uh, and, uh, and therefore a simple lexical model might not uh, retrieve uh, or actually do not retrieve this uh, specific document. The second uh, problem uh, which uh, relates to the polysemy is the, uh, sorry, the semantic gap is the polysemy when uh, the same word has uh, several different meanings. So, Taking again the very same query as before, how big the sun is, we have three valid answers uh, for uh, this specific question uh, in general, but uh, only one of them is uh, correct according to our information feed. The, the first one, which describes the dimension of our own star. The other, uh, the other two are still, uh, let's say, true if uh, we, we have a vague concept of uh, sun in mind, but uh, do not answer to, to our own question. So uh, in, uh, in this case, uh, we are in, um, introducing, a, let's say, a, a distortion in, uh, in our results, uh, which uh, is, uh, is responsible for a low, for a low um, precision uh, results. 
So what happens when a query is uh, particularly affected by the, the semantic gap? Sorry, it's kind of okay. Uh, well, the problem is that uh, lexical model uh, fails. They, do, uh, they are not able to obtain a proper uh, result, which uh, are the examples that I, I just gave you. So uh, the, the solution in, in this case uh, is to use uh, semantic models. Semantic models uh, um, are a good way to solve uh, these, uh, to these problems, but are not the perfect solution. In fact, uh, if um, we use uh, queries that might work better with a lexical model, the result is that often semantic models fail quite, uh, quite, quite strongly. To give you a rough idea of uh, what uh, we meant, uh, we mean, uh, we mean. Here uh, you have uh, three blocks in which, on uh, the y-axis, there is a um, quite famous uh, state-of-the-art uh, semantic model. Uh, while on the x-axis, there are uh, the performances uh, achieved by uh, the query language model, which is uh, really a lexical uh, model. As you can see, there are uh, these are uh, each dot is a query from the robust collection, and uh, as you can see, uh, part of them are above the diagonal, which means that the semantic model performs better, while other are uh, below it, and uh, in this case, the lexical model is uh, is better. So, um, furthermore, you can uh, observe that uh, most of um, it is hard to say that uh, only a single model uh, is, is the best, but, th but there is a strong, uh, uh, let's say, division between the, the types of, uh, of queries. So uh, if we were able to decide which, uh, which kind of model is the best fitted for, uh, for a specific query, then uh, we, we might certainly obtain much better results than, uh, than what we do now. Uh, therefore, our, our work focuses on uh, understanding uh, how um, can we uh, determine whether a query is, uh, in fact, uh, semantically hard. To answer this question, we uh, started from uh, three different uh, research uh, questions. First of all, we were interested in uh, numerically measuring how strongly the semantic gap, or in general, uh, the differences between semantic and lexical models, affect uh, the, um, the performances achieved for uh, different topics uh, and queries. The second aspect that we were interested in too is to find a way to label as uh, either semantic or lexical the, the queries. There is no such a, a, such a straight or a clear definition of what semantic is. We can roughly understand uh, uh, that it corresponds to having multiple meanings, but still we do not have a unique uh, definition of it. And finally, we were interested in understanding uh, uh, what features correlate with uh, this uh, classification and uh, whether it is possible to classify uh, queries into semantic or lexical prior to actually using it and uh, evaluating their, their performance uh, using uh, real systems. So uh, to, to answer the, the first question, we, or in general to answer our questions, we consider the two collections, the Yausumed and the Track COVID collections. Both of them are medical collections since uh, it is a um, setting in which the, the semantic gap is uh, particularly prominent. Um, <coughs> therefore, uh, we, we focused on, on these uh, two collections. Certainly, there are many other settings in, in which uh, it is worth exploring um, the, the semanticity of the queries, but uh, probably the medical one is the most uh, interesting. Concerning uh, the, the, model that, uh, the models that we considered, we take into account five lexical models and uh, five uh, unsuper uh, semantic models. More in details, uh, we considered the first stage uh, unsupervised uh, semantic models. These allow us to have a more fair comparison with the uh, lexical model, since uh, being unsupervised, uh, they do not uh, um, encode in any way the information on the relevance of the, of the documents. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, to go a bit uh, more into the details of the performances of, um, of the models, uh, I reported here the um, mean average precision for uh, all the models that we considered 
on the upper part you can see the lexical models uh, while uh, uh, in the, the lower uh, part of the table there are the semantic ones as you can uh, observe uh, the performances uh, are um, pretty much uh, comparable both uh, within uh, uh, classes of um, uh, models and uh, and between them so as the, the figures with the diagonal suggested, it is hard to say that a single class of, um, of model, models is in absolute the, the best performing one. Um, in order to better understanding, uh, to better understand the effect that um, classes of uh, models have on, on the performances, we run some uh, uh, analysis of the of the variance on um, on, uh, on this data uh, with a um, but with a little change with respect to traditional um, settings. Since uh, now our main interest is on uh, on the class of um, of the model rather than comparing the model themselves. So um, to give you a, a better uh, idea of uh, our analysis uh, here, you can see the ANOVA model. Uh, as you certainly know, ANOVA is a technique able to um, split the variance over um, a certain uh, uh, key performance indicator, such as in this case, the, the average precision over the experimental condition. In, in our case, the topic, which is uh, clearly the, our interest since we are want to understand whether a single uh, topic is uh, semantically hard, the category, so either semantic or lexical, and finally, the, um, the models considered. As you can see, the first uh, interesting aspect is that uh, the uh, category itself has a p-value, which is greater than uh, the traditional 0 0.05 threshold, indicating that uh, the pure category is not uh, um, significantly statistically significant factor in determining the average performance over the collection. This is a further confirmation of what we observed in the plots with the um, diagonals. And uh, it is not possible to say using only the, the category um, which one is, uh, is the best. The, the second interesting aspect uh, is that uh, the topics interact strongly with uh, the category and you observe you can observe it uh, uh, by looking at the omega square uh, column, the last one, which indicates uh, how much uh, the interaction between uh, the topic and the category um, impacts uh, on the um, variation of the performance. So um, uh, having a 35% of um, impact is uh, quite a huge effect, uh, especially if you consider that is uh, almost double compared to the one of the model itself. This indicates that for specific topic, uh, using the proper category is uh, uh, essential and uh, it is vital to obtain a good performance. When we go, uh, when we consider the track COVID collection, we try to add a new factor to our analysis. Besides having the topics which represent the information need uh, um, as a whole, uh, the track COVID collection contains multiple representation for the same topics. So the query, the question, the narrative, and the possibly a concatenation of uh, all of them. So we include the, these uh, different um, uh, formulation for the very same information need in order to have a better understanding whether the um, category of model impacts, uh, interacts more with the topic in general or the uh, way we formulate it. Um, we had to slightly modify the, the ANOVA model adding an additional factor plus the, its interaction with the, uh, the category itself, uh, and uh, what we can observe here now is that uh, the, the category in uh, the track COVID collection is like is a slightly um, as a slight effect. It is now a significant effect. In fact, uh, the um, semantic models had a slight uh, higher impact, uh, but is uh, overall a very small effect if you compare it with uh, all the, the other effects. So in a, in a sense, it is uh, not so 
uh, relevant uh, the, the category itself. But on the other end, uh, the topic again uh, strongly interacts uh, with uh, the, the category. It is uh, now approximately 40% uh, while before we had 35. And, uh, and also the, the query interacts uh, strongly the category, with the category. So it is, uh, this tell us that uh, the, um, whether uh, the semantic hardness is not linked uh, to the topic itself, but also to the way we formulate it. So probably inserting more or less uh, synonyms uh, of uh, our keywords uh, might change whether the query is considered uh, um, either semantic or lexical. So at this point, uh, we needed to find a way to uh, label queries as uh, either semantic uh, or lexical. There is no definition of it, as I uh, told you before. So we had to come up, come up with, uh, with something. Being an information retrieval, uh, pretty much a strongly empirical uh, discipline, uh, our uh, proposed solution, but we are totally open for, uh, for suggestion, was to use directly the, the performance. A query is considered either semantic or lexical as long as, as long uh, semantic or lexical models perform better on it. Um, so um, we defined uh, a measure to det determine whether uh, the, the impact of semantic models or lexical was more important based on uh, uh, the delta of the performance with respect to the mean um, performance and uh, uh, in with a statistical test to determine whether the delta was bigger for semantic or lexical models. And what we observed is that when we consider queries with a high confidence labeling, they typically split evenly between semantic and lexical one. Here you can see that both semantic and lexical queries are 13 for the OSIMED. Why, when we consider the track COVID collection, there are 27 um, queries for, uh, for each. Uh, the um, queries labeled with a um, confidence above 95% are in both cases approximately 50% of the entire collection. For, for the subsequent uh, analysis, we kept only this uh, set of queries since the remaining one uh, were labeled with a low uh, confidence and therefore uh, um, there is no strong preference for either semantic or lexical models in terms of, of performance. So uh, we were then interested in determining whether we are able to predict the class because uh, we have now labeled the queries, but this is done uh, posterior to having actually run the, uh, the systems on, on them. So we are interested in determining priorly to, uh, to use the, the system themselves. So we thought about a series of features we imagine can be correlated with uh, our, uh, our labels. We considered a set of lexical features. In particular, uh, we considered the length of the query and a set of uh, uh, predictors, uh, post, uh, sorry, uh, query performance predictors. They are measured mostly based on uh, the distribution of the term, the query terms on the, on the collection. And uh, in particular, uh, this um, uh, similarity corpus query is uh, quite a um, state-of-the-art uh, technique and uh, um, that can, uh, can be used to predict the performance uh, lexically. Then we considered a set of semantic uh, features, uh, which include uh, also uh, information drawn from uh, knowledge base, in particular related to the number of polysemous uh, meanings for the same queries, uh, the, for the same query terms, uh, and uh, the, synonymity, the synonymity of uh, the, the terms of the queries. So we uh, tried the three different classifiers to use uh, these features. And um, what we observed is that uh, uh, most of them uh, correlate uh, poorly or uh, in general, uh, um, they are not uh, strongly uh, performing uh, mostly because uh, of the small dimension of the data set, but uh, the decision tree um, especially for the track COVID, which was the biggest uh, collection, uh, perform uh, um, more uh, significantly than uh, um, a random uh, classifier. So in this sense, there is a structure in our data and our feature correlate with, uh, with our results. In particular, the features that mostly correlate are the, um, the query terms, 
the, the length of the query, the whether the um, document contains uh, uh, either uh, the synonyms of, uh, of the query, probably due to the fact that uh, if a few documents contain synonyms, then uh, uh, the query itself has a few synonyms and it is, it is easy to apply lexical model. And finally, the mean SQ uh, pre retrieval score. Again, because probably it's an indication of uh, uh, how good lexical model perform on the query. So uh, what we observed uh, in conclusion is that uh, uh, semanti uh, the, the semanticity is a strong element that uh, um, causes large changes on the performance of the systems on, uh, on, uh, on queries. And uh, we are able to determine a set of um, uh, features of the queries and uh, the documents uh, themselves, which uh, correlate with the, the class of, uh, of the query. And uh, our future works uh, mostly uh, will focus on uh, using uh, new, on exploring new domains beside the medical one, and possibly using uh, uh, human-made uh, multiple formulation of the, the same uh, um, topic. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. We're very good. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, so there is one from Laura. Uh, can you? Yeah, uh, it is possible. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, really? okay. It is possible that the categories are just not well suited for the queries, and the different category would lead to much different results. Uh, um, yeah, actually, it is uh, very much uh, likely. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, if you consider that uh, there are uh, um, approximately half of the queries in our collections which do not uh, uh, benefit uh, particularly uh, from either lexical or uh, semantic models. So uh, in, uh, in that case, there is no uh, strong advantage in using uh, either uh, one or the other. So possibly, um, uh, I mean, uh, in, in this work, we consider that only either the uh, traditional lexical models and the first stage unsupervised mo um, semantic models. If we include, for example, uh, the rankers or a new kind of models, possibly we might uh, gain additional, uh, additional um, advantage in terms of performance. And uh, this is certainly one of uh, our uh, future works. Do you have any insight into what kind of categories would be more helpful? Kind of, sorry, categories. Uh, well, um, as a, possibly uh, we might consider also rankers or um, if or model or categories that combine uh, both uh, advantages from uh, lexical and uh, semantic models. Currently, uh, if uh, I think uh, about uh, first stage uh, retrievers, uh, there is no precise category that uh, comes to my mind, but uh, certainly we can have uh, uh, mixes of, uh, of them, or possible we might include also uh, ex uh, queries that uh, have an advantage by using, uh, let's say, um, expansion technique or uh, pseudo relevance feedback or, or stuff like that i but uh, at the moment i have not uh, a complete answer to your question sorry okay thank you guglielmo uh, any other questions okay i, I have one for a brief answer uh, you have shown that there is a strong interaction between categories and uh, reformulations. Yeah. Uh, can it happen that uh, a formulation, uh, a reformulation moves uh, one topic uh, from one category to another? So one formulation would be lexical and a different formulation would be semantic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, it in fact happened uh, and um, there were a few topics for which uh, there was uh, this, uh, this phenomenon. 
um, they were not the, the majority since they were actually very similar formulations uh, since um, they represented the, the very same topic and uh, somehow one were the summary of the other. So uh, it was not super common uh, to observe this phenomenon, but uh, we will certainly investigate in more different uh, formulations because uh, it happened in uh, some topics, so probably yes, in, in a more general setting. Thank you very much. Let's thank Guglielmo once more.